Archaeologists have discovered a vast tunnel under an ancient Egyptian temple that may lead to Cleopatra's lost tomb. Queen Cleopatra is a name that has echoed through the corridors of history like a haunting melody. She ruled Egypt, the land of the pharaohs, with grace and intelligence. Her story is filled with drama, romance, and power struggles. Yet the story of Cleopatra was shrouded in mysteries, her final resting place a riddle that teased the minds of historians for centuries. However, in a revelation that has sent shockwaves through the annals of archaeology, the tomb of this iconic queen has been unveiled from the sands of time. Join us as we explore the life of Cleopatra and the thrilling news of her long-lost tomb finally being uncovered. Queen Cleopatra is a legendary figure from the past that has always captured our imagination. Her legacy was a tapestry woven with threads of power, charisma, and an enigmatic allure that bewitched even the mightiest of men. The last pharaoh of ancient Egypt, her reign was a symphony of politics and passion, entwined with the destinies of Julius Caesar and Mark Antony. Cleopatra remains one of history's most intriguing figures, alongside the likes of Ramses III and Tutankhamun. She was renowned for her intelligence and leadership, reviving Egypt from crisis to prosperity. She was a polymath, versed in chemistry, mathematics, and philosophy, and possibly the author of scientific works. Her linguistic skills were unparalleled, and her diplomatic prowess was legendary. Cleopatra had a penchant for theatrical performances and lavish celebrations. She possessed the ability to captivate and entertain, but beneath the facade of a luxury-loving enthusiast lay an intelligent and pragmatic ruler. Ancient Egypt, under her rule, thrived. Plutarch, the Greek biographer of Mark Antony, asserted that Cleopatra's allure was not primarily attributed to her physical beauty, but rather to her captivating conversation and intellect. Cleopatra skillfully altered her public image to align with her political objectives. On ceremonial occasions, she would don the attire of the goddess Isis, a practice common among Egyptian rulers to emphasize their connection to established deities. On the coins minted in Egypt, Cleopatra purposefully depicted herself with her father's prominent jawline, underlining her rightful inheritance of the throne. When it comes to sculptures, they offer limited insight into her physical appearance. While a few classical-style heads exist, there are also several full-length statues in the Egyptian style, each presenting a distinct representation of her appearance. While myths surround her legendary beauty, there's no concrete evidence to support these claims. Cleopatra's image as a seductive temptress largely results from Hollywood portrayals and political propaganda by her rival Octavian. Though she was born in Egypt, Cleopatra's Greek heritage did not hinder her from embracing Egypt's culture and traditions, earning her the love of the Egyptian people. However, accounts of Cleopatra's demise vary. Some claim that she was a master of poisons and deliberately provoked a venomous snake, such as an asp or an Egyptian cobra, to bite her. Another legend suggests that she carried a vial of poison hidden in a hairpin and used it to take her own life. Nevertheless, these remain as myths until proven otherwise. Stay tuned to find out the real cause of Queen Cleopatra's death and where her tomb lies to this day. What were the events that led to Queen Cleopatra's death? In a shrewd political move, Cleopatra recognized her limitations when confronted with her brother Ptolemy XIII in a power struggle. She knew she needed an influential ally. That's when Julius Caesar, the Roman emperor, entered the scene. Faced with the prospect of a lavish and conspicuous visit, Cleopatra opted for subtlety. She concealed herself inside a rolled-up carpet that Caesar's attendants brought into his private chambers. Upon emerging from the carpet, Cleopatra left Caesar awestruck by her beauty and charisma. In the aftermath, they fell in love and became close allies. Both Cleopatra and Caesar were able to triumph over Ptolemy in the Battle of Nile. Following this, she extended an invitation to him to accompany her on a journey up the Nile, which led to the birth of her son, Caesarion, which translates to Little Caesar. This event caused quite a stir in Rome for a couple of reasons. Firstly, Egypt and its hedonistic culture were seen as decadent and were looked down upon. 
Additionally, Caesar, despite being married to Calpurnia and having had two previous wives, had no legitimate sons. At this time, he had elevated himself to the most powerful position in Rome, and his actions appeared to indicate a desire for supreme rule akin to a monarch. This notion was doubly troubling to the elite Romans, as they were accustomed to a system of power sharing. The birth of Caesarion, an Egyptian, raised concerns that he might one day assert his claim to rule Rome as Caesar's heir. Julius Caesar met his demise on March 15th, known as the Ides of March in 44 BCE, when approximately 40 Roman senators were involved in his assassination. This event marked the beginning of a protracted period of civil wars, ultimately causing the demise of the Roman Republic and the emergence of the Roman Empire. Ultimately, Octavian, who was both Julius Caesar's grandnephew and adoptive son, rose to power in Rome, eventually assuming the name Augustus Caesar. Initially, Octavianus and Mark Antony both took control of the eastern and western parts of Rome with Octavianus handling the western provinces while Antony held sway in the east. A fragile truce emerged when Antony married Octavianus's sister, Octavia. Antony's relationship with Cleopatra VII began to develop openly after he assumed control of the western provinces. He eventually married Cleopatra, all while still legally married to Octavia, his Roman wife. This action was met with resentment from the Romans and significantly diminished Antony's support with the public and the Senate. Octavianus seized the opportunity by revealing what was claimed to be Antony's will, suggesting that he intended to leave much of his power to Cleopatra's children. Regardless of the will's authenticity, this propaganda successfully swayed public opinion, and the Senate declared war on Cleopatra, thereby implicating Antony as well. On September 2, 31 BC, Antony's fleet faced Octavianus. During the battle, Cleopatra suddenly fled with her ships, and Antony followed with some of his fleet. The abrupt departure weakened Antony's forces, resulting in a significant loss of lives and ships. Octavianus gained control of the sea, and a week later, Antony's land forces surrendered. A year later, with Octavianus's forces closing in, Antony took his own life. Cleopatra, fearing the humiliation of a Roman triumph, had a servant sneak a venomous asp into her room and also committed suicide. Less than three years after this event, Octavianus, who was later known as Augustus Caesar, declared himself the emperor. Contrary to common belief, Cleopatra's demise was not a result of love, but rather a calculated decision. In a manner similar to Mark Antony, who took his own life because he no longer saw a dignified place for himself in the world, Cleopatra opted for death over the humiliation of being paraded through the streets of Rome in a state of helplessness and shame. Augustus settled for a symbolic image of her that was displayed in the streets instead. Despite Cleopatra managing to avoid humiliation during her lifetime, there is a prevailing belief that Octavian would not have allowed her to have the burial she desired. It was said that Cleopatra and Mark Antony's deaths occurred in Alexandria, Egypt. The exact location of their deaths is often attributed to a palace in the city, but historical accounts vary. Alexandria's historical significance and connection to their deaths make it a pivotal location in ancient history. Professor Imad Khalil from Alexandria University initiated his exploration of the submerged city more than two decades ago, with a specific focus on locating Cleopatra's tomb. He pointed out that Cleopatra's tomb had not yet been found in Alexandria, suggesting that there might be hidden secrets beneath the city. However, what if Cleopatra's final resting place isn't within Alexandria at all? One woman proposes an alternative theory, suggesting that the search may have been misdirected. She advocates exploring other locations in the quest for the elusive tomb. About 30 miles to the west of Alexandria, in the ancient city of Taposiris Magna, there stands a relatively obscure temple with intriguing potential. Was Cleopatra's tomb ever found in this temple? And why was this temple chosen for the search? According to some stories, Cleopatra found herself hiding in her mausoleum in Alexandria because Octavian was chasing her. This mausoleum had several floors, and she could talk to people outside through openings on the upper level. Cleopatra had a strong connection to the goddess Isis, and some accounts say her mausoleum was close to a temple dedicated to Isis in Alexandria. 
Historians have put forward some interesting ideas about Cleopatra's final resting place. One theory suggests that her loyal handmaiden secretly moved her body to Taposiris Magna. Another theory proposes that she might be in an unmarked, rock-cut grave in a Macedonian Egyptian cemetery. Nevertheless, most experts still think Alexandria is the most probable site for her tomb, and the search for it continues. In Egypt, the search for lost tombs continues with Spanish archaeologist Alejandro Jimenez Serrano, leading a mission at the ancient necropolis of Kubat el Hawa in Aswan, located 500 miles south of Alexandria. This site houses one of Egypt's largest collections of intact tombs and is believed to be the final resting place of many wealthy nobles. Alejandro is on a quest to discover unmarked graves and lost tombs, despite the challenge posed by the lack of inscriptions in some of the ancient tombs. During their excavation inside one of the tombs, the team makes a surprising find, which turns out to be two buried mummies in one tomb. As they carefully remove the sand, Alejandro stumbles upon the edge of a magnificent golden death mask, which leaves him in awe. These death masks, typically crafted from layers of linen or recycled papyrus soaked in plaster, known as cartonage, are designed to resemble the deceased's face and are often inscribed with the person's name and other inscriptions meant to guide them into the afterlife. This ancient funeral practice has been right to the time of Cleopatra. Before Alejandro's team can attempt to identify the individual behind this ancient mask, they need to extract it delicately. They use soft paintbrushes to remove the sand grain by grain, and then strengthen the mask with paper coated with resin to prevent it from breaking. Working with untouched material like this is a privilege and an amazing opportunity. Alejandro's team has made a rare discovery, a death mask crafted from a material known as cartonage. He hopes that this mask will reveal the identity of the person interred in the tomb, yet deciphering the hieroglyphs presents a challenging task. The team embarks on the painstaking process of extracting the mask, which is further complicated by its burial under the owner's bones. After careful removal, the ancient mask comes out in multiple pieces, held together with resin and paper to prevent further damage. They discover more hieroglyphs, and Alejandro proudly announces the name Seti Hakaib Ainet. With this revelation, Alejandro can identify the previously unknown individual, although it is not Cleopatra or her lover. When all searches in that region of Egypt proved to be futile, experts shifted attention to the city of Taposiris Magna on the outskirts of Alexandria, dedicated to Osiris, the god of the dead. Over the years, there has been a long search for their burial place near the temple of Taposiris Magna in Egypt. Recently, archaeologists uncovered a remarkable discovery, a rock-cut tunnel beneath the ancient Taposiris Magna temple. This tunnel, measuring 4,265 feet in length and located 43 feet underground, has been described as a geometric miracle by the Egyptian Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities. It bears a resemblance to the impressive tunnel of Eupolinos on the Greek island of Samos, celebrated for its engineering excellence. We never can tell. This find could potentially lead to the lost tomb of Cleopatra. The recent revelation stemming from an excavation led by archaeologist Kathleen Martinez from the University of San Domingo was reported by Ancient Origin. Approximately two decades ago, Martinez embarked on a quest to unearth Cleopatra's tomb, her conviction born after over a decade of extensive research. She was the first to identify the Taposiris Magna as a prime contender for the Queen's final resting place. Despite numerous unanswered emails, Martinez persevered and eventually secured a meeting in Cairo with archaeologist Zahi Hawass, who was then the Minister of Egypt's Antiquities Affairs. She successfully persuaded him to grant her a two-month window to conduct excavations at the site. The work has been ongoing since 2004, and the recent discovery marks the most compelling evidence to date that Martinez's pursuit is heading in the right direction. Up until now, the excavations have brought to light some remarkable discoveries. Several tombs were found in Taposiris Magna. Although these mummies were not in great condition, they were accompanied by valuable treasures, such as coins featuring Cleopatra's image. This indicates that they were buried approximately 2,000 years ago, during the time of the Ptolemaic Kingdom of Egypt. A burial ground containing mummies with a distinct Greco-Roman orientation facing the temple was discovered. 
These findings align with Martinez's hypothesis that a royal tomb might have been constructed in the vicinity. Among them are mummies adorned with golden tongues. Gold was highly valued in ancient Egypt, just as it is today. In the past, golden tongues have been discovered in Egyptian mummies, although it remains a mystery why some mummies received these valuable prosthetics while others did not. Nevertheless, this practice is mentioned in the Book of the Dead, an ancient Egyptian text that details funeral customs. According to the text, covering the tongue with gold foil was believed to guarantee that the deceased could breathe, eat, and speak in the afterlife. In addition to the tunnel, the latest findings encompass two alabaster statues from the Ptolemaic era, one of which appears to depict a sphinx. Ceramic vessels and pots have also been found. They conducted x-rays on two mummies that were closely placed beside one another. Surprisingly, it turned out that one was a man and the other was a woman. However, what makes this even more intriguing is the theory that these mummies might have been important priests responsible for maintaining the power of the pharaohs. One of the mummies features a scarab image painted with gold leaf, which symbolizes rebirth, hinting at something extraordinary. This discovery is often described as sensational because it underscores the significance of the Taposiris Magna Necropolis. For Kathleen Martinez, the prospect of locating Cleopatra's long-lost tomb is now closer than ever. It has been an extraordinary season for Kathleen and her team. However, with her permit now expired, they must secure the site and plan to resume their search for the chamber in the coming year. Despite the compelling evidence presented by Kathleen Martinez and her crew, certain individuals specializing in Cleopatra's history remain skeptical about her burial at Taposiris Magna. This skepticism may arise from some perceived doubts or uncertainties in the evidence. These experts generally agree that the chances of discovering her tomb are minimal. There is no substantial evidence to support the idea that Cleopatra's tomb is located at Taposiris Magna, according to Zahi Hawass, the former Egyptian minister of the state for antiquities, who had extensive experience at the site with Martinez. Hawass believes that Cleopatra's final resting place is in a tomb she constructed near her palace, possibly submerged underwater due to coastal erosion over the past two millennia. Even if the tomb isn't underwater, there's a strong possibility that it was destroyed in antiquity or concealed beneath modern developments in Alexandria. Scholars also consider the likelihood that it was looted in ancient times. No ongoing projects are currently searching for Cleopatra's tomb underwater although previous efforts have explored Cleopatra's palace. The survival of her tomb through millennia of cultural changes and natural decay would indeed be remarkable, considering the potential impacts of earthquakes and seawater. It's widely believed that her palace is now submerged, and her mausoleum may have met a similar fate. The next phase involves exploring the adjacent Mediterranean Sea because of the series of earthquakes that rocked the coast, leading to the partial collapse and submergence of the temple in the waves. Additionally, prior excavations have unveiled a network of tunnels stretching from Lake Marriott to the Mediterranean. There's a possibility that, if they are indeed located in this area, Cleopatra and her husband, Mark Antony, might have been laid to rest in similar tombs. While researchers remain uncertain whether the tunnel could lead to these long-lost tombs, further investigations hold the promise of revealing more insights. Regardless of whether the tombs are ultimately uncovered, a comprehensive excavation of these ruins has the potential to shed light on the magnificent ancient city. The tunnel has already yielded valuable discoveries, including pottery fragments and a rectangular block of limestone. Dr. Martinez acknowledges that Cleopatra was really smart and made sure she and Mark Antony's remains stayed hidden from the Romans and their descendants forever. Cleopatra had a clear image of how she wanted people to see her, in life, as a beautiful goddess, and in death, as someone immortal, with her remains hidden away forever. While she might not have the afterlife she hoped for, her lasting appeal in our imaginations has outlived even Jesus Christ. People are still really interested in her, and her tomb is still a secret as of now. Cleopatra, the last queen of ancient Egypt, left an indelible mark on the history of this rich and opulent land. Her reign was characterized by economic prosperity and a bolstered international standing, achievements rooted in her remarkable wit and astute observations. We have come to the end of today's video. Where do you think Queen Cleopatra and her lover's final resting place might be? 
Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more interesting videos like this. Thanks for watching till the end.